Last week we looked at the fact that God fulfills his word, and we, we saw it particularly in Israel's captivity and then their return. God had said both of those would happen, and what God says takes place. This week I want to kind of extend that thought and uh, look at the, the fact that God's word is true today. God will preserve his word, and he, it's still, he's still doing it today not just something he did in the past, and particularly applying it to being godly in the midst of godlessness. That's really where we live, isn't it? Uh, Let me read Psalm 12. Help, Lord, for the godly man ceaseth, for the faithful fail from among the children of men. They speak vanity, every one with his neighbor, with flattering lips and with a double heart do they speak. The Lord shall cut off all flattering lips and the tongue that speaketh proud things, who have said, With our tongue will we prevail. Our lips are are our own, who is Lord over us. For the oppression of the poor, for the sighing of the needy, now will I arise, saith the Lord. I will set him in safety from him that puffeth at him. The words of the Lord are pure words, as silver tried in a furnace of earth, purified seven times. Thou shalt keep them, O Lord, Thou shalt preserve them from this generation forever. The wicked walk on every side when the vilest men are exalted. I read that, I thought, man, that's today, isn't it? (laughs) Help, Lord. You ever ever felt like that? You know, you just, Lord, help. Uh, It sounds a a lot like today. Verse 1 there, you know, the godly sees, the faithful fail. It seems like more than ever we're seeing people that were faithful failing. Verse 2, he talks about people speaking vanity and deceit. Do you realize we live in the day when when there is more being said than ever before? And actually less being said, but more words being used? (laughs) You you hear people sometimes, they they talk and 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 they they say nothing. (laughs) It's just incredible. Uh, More being said. Vanity means emptiness. That's what that word means. Now, let me encourage you. Let me give you some advice here. Be skeptical. <laughs> Be very skeptical. Uh, there is so much being said. And, and sometimes it's prevent, presented in such a professional, knowing way. You think, oh, that sounds good. Be careful. That there's just a lot of things being said. Um, you know, people claim unique knowledge. Oh, I'm, I'm telling you something. And, you know, nobody else knows this. It's only on YouTube, you know, kind of thing. Uh, or, or weird facts, so, so-called, you know, I mean, facts kind of thing. One that was, I think this has been a few years ago, uh, people were saying that McDonald's uses chicken feathers in their ice cream. But we know that's true, don't we? Because, well, I don't know how we would know that. <laughs> it's actually not true. But it, it, what I'm saying is there's just all kinds of things being thrown out there. Be careful what you believe. Now, let me apply it in a couple of ways. One is with culture, with, with the lost world around us. If you think about that word culture, if you're trying to culture something, you're trying to get it going. You know, it, it's a plant kind of a, of a term. And, and with culture, the, the world is, I use that term in general, the world is trying to culture what they think is the right way to live. And you can almost guarantee it, it's going to be pretty much different than what God says is the right way to live. And so they're going to, you know, when you're culturing something you want to grow, what do you do with the things you don't want to grow? You know, you get rid of them. You pull them out by the roots. And that's us in the world's culture. Uh, So we need to to be understanding that just because the world thinks something is acceptable or polite or right doesn't necessarily mean it's so. And as we read scriptures like this, you know, the Bible says they speak vanity with flattering lips and with a double heart. Do they, do they speak? I won't mention a lot of things, but for instance, if a, a woman is a full-time mother, most of the world now will say, why don't you get a job? Why don't you get a real job? When being a mother is one of the most important things a mother can do. <laughs> um, vanity and deceit, false values. The lost world will try and cultivate things that Uh, God doesn't say are right. The religious world is much the same. Uh, 
Most of what people believe about religion is based on feelings and personal opinion, not God's Word. I remember talking to a guy. I met him several times in Doorknock. I met him a few years ago. And it was at a time when the Uniting Church was going to be voting on their attitude about homosexuality. And um, they, they since have voted to support the gay and lesbian Mardi Gras and so on. Anyway, I said to him, why don't you encourage them to do something really bold and, and revolutionary and, and do what the Bible says? <laughs> you probably didn't even know what, what that would be. But you know, most, most of the people in life are not going by God's word. And as Christians, that's going to set us apart. And that's why we cry out, help, Lord. Help, Lord. Now, we don't want to be that, that person, that the godly ceasing or the faithful failing. Um, you know, the world is full of vanity and deceit. And uh, we need to be careful that we're, uh, we're looking to the Lord. Let me give you an example from Isaiah uh, chapter 28. Isaiah chapter 28. Now, I've heard this explained in different ways, and if you want to disagree with me on this, you're, you're more than welcome. But um, Isaiah 28 is this passage where it talks about uh, precept upon precept and, and so on. You, you've probably heard those words. It, it's, it's, he's talking to particularly the tribe of Ephraim. And in verse 3, he calls them the drunkards of Ephraim. Verse 7, I'm going to start reading Isaiah 28, verse 7. But they also have erred through wine and through strong drink are out of the way. The priest and the prophet have erred through strong drink. They are swallowed up of wine. They are out of the way through strong drink. They err in vision. They stumble in judgment. That's God's description of them. This next verse is really awful. For all tables are full of vomit and filthiness, so that there is no place clean. Whom shall he teach knowledge? And whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast. You know, not those that are drunkards. For precept must be upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little and there a little. For with stammering lips and another tongue will he speak to this people. To whom he said, This is the rest wherewith ye may cause the weary to rest, and this is the re refreshing. Yet they would not hear word of the Lord was unto them, precept upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little and there a little, that they may go and fall backward and be broken and snared and taken. Now, it's, it's an interesting passage. Uh, I'm sure in Hebrew it probably has a really interesting sound to it with all the, that repetition. But I believe what he's saying here is that to that nation, God's word was just words. It was a whole bunch of words. Line upon line, precept upon precept. Um, lots of words. But they didn't take it literally. They didn't take it seriously. We kind of had something like that happen. We were traveling one time. and We actually had an around-the-world ticket. So it involved a whole bunch of tickets. We were one place, and we wanted to go to another place, and we weren't sure if our tickets would cover it. We just went up to the counter and said, we got all these tickets, and we'd like to go to so-and-so. The lady just looked at it and said, well, you got a lot of tickets there. It'll be all right. Okay. <laughs> and to her, it was just line upon line, precept upon, you got a lot of tickets, it's probably okay. And, and you know, that's kind of, that, I think that's what Ephraim and them were doing with the Bible. They were saying, oh, there's a lot of things in there, we're probably okay. <laughs> yeah, it just didn't, it didn't make any difference to them. And God says that since they won't listen to him, verse 12, yet they would not listen. You go back to verse 11, I think what he's talking about in verse 11 is that they're going to listen to foreign invaders that they can't understand. With stammering lips and another tongue will he speak to this people. The Charismatics tried to make this about speaking in tongues. Uh, I don't think it is at all about that. But you can imagine if, if Australia was taken over by a country where, where all the soldiers spoke another language and not English. You'd think, oh, what are they, what are they saying? You know, and it would sound just like that, that verse. He said, you're, you're going to listen when these foreigners come and you won't understand a thing. Um, Verse, verse uh, 14. Wherefore, hear the word of the Lord, ye scornful men that rule this people which is in Jerusalem. Because ye have said, We've made a covenant with death, and with hell are we at agreement. And the overflowing scourge shall pass through, it shall not come unto us, for we've made lies our refuge, and under falsehood have we hid ourselves. <laughs> uh, we're okay, you know, and what they've done is they've made lies their refuge. God knows that they're lies. Uh, 
people are talking and talking today. Lots of words going on. But much of it is lies. Much of it is just, just words. There's no refuge in lies. And as Christians, we need to specifically listen to God's word. You know, it's not enough just to say, oh, I believe the Bible. I, I believe the Bible from cover to cover. And I even believe the cover. You know, we can say that all we want. But we've got to actually read it and uh, listen to it and, and obey it. Specifically to the things that we're actually living. Not just what somebody else is living. I find it's a lot easier to apply the Bible to somebody else. <laughs> but it's, it's hard to apply it to my own life. And that's where it needs to be. Listen to God's word and also speak the truth. God wants us to speak the truth. Now, he says, you know, to speak the truth in love. But we don't have to, to be mean about it. We go back there to, to Psalm chapter 12. Well, he says in verse 3, The Lord shall cut off all flattering lips and the tongue that speaketh proud things. Well, that's a, that's a hard verse. Uh, verse 4, Who have said, With our tongue will we prevail. Our lips are, are our own. Who is Lord over us? You're not the boss of me. That's what they're saying. God will judge those who think that their words are better than his words. God will judge them. Over in chapter 11, Psalm 11, verse 3, it says, If the foundations be destroyed, what can the righteous do? Now, I think there's, there's two ways we can look at that. One is, as our world gets worse, there's just some things we're not going to be able to change. You know, the world around us is, is going to get worse as, come to an end. But what the righteous can do is we can listen to God's word and we can speak God's word. That's what we can do. Um, and, and we need to remember that. Uh, we have to rely on God's word. Sometimes these controversies come up about morality and, and, and things in society. We need to be careful that we're that we're saying God's word, not just arguments. You know, we, we believe homosexuality is wrong. But it's not just the arguments, it's God's Word. And we believe marriage has a certain, um, God designed marriage in a certain way. Well, it's not just our arguments. It's not just, oh, it's, it's not good, you know, whatever. It's because God says it. And with all kinds of moral issues, we need to get back to, to God's Word. God will judge those who think their words are, are better than His. We don't want to be like that. In verse 5, he says, for the oppression of the poor, for the sighing of the needy, now will I arise, saith the Lord. Godlessness causes social problems. Godlessness causes social problems. And those that, uh, are, that suffer the most are the, the poor and weak. And uh, you know, God says he, he, he hears their, their sighing and their, their trouble. Now will I arise, saith the Lord. Um, the answer to people's problems is, not social programs. It's God's Word. You know, the poor around us, those that are, are suffering, you know, those that are struggling. It's not just some... I can't even remember what the... Oh, an issue came up on the news tonight, and, and of course the answer is we need to build more jails. If we just build more jails, that would solve the problem. Well, go back in history a little ways, and Australia was a jail because they didn't have enough in England. Uh, it doesn't work. You know, that's, that's not the answer answer they need is God's word. But we saw something the other day we'd, we'd never seen. I don't know what the uh, situation was, but President Trump was, was talking to a, a group of people about prayer. And he had this fellow up there. He said, this man was, was arrested for armed robbery. And in jail, he, he no, to cut it short, he, he, he got saved. He, he listened to Christian radio and he read his Bible and uh, he said when he got out, the first person that knocked on his door the next day was the, was the agent that had arrested him and said, I've been praying for you every day. And they're, they're friends now. And they're, got, they're both, uh, was he an FBI agent? Or I can't remember what he was. Anyway, some kind of, uh, no, I'm talking about the man that had arrested him. But any, anyway, so, and they're both from completely different backgrounds and that kind of thing. Uh, they're able to, to serve the Lord. And the answer wasn't some social program. The answer was God's word. That's what people need. Um, and, and it comes down then to the, to the heart of this chapter, verses 6 and 7. The words of the Lord are pure words, as silver tried in the furnace of earth, purified seven times. Thou shalt keep them, O Lord. Thou shalt preserve them. From this generation, 
forever. And the encouragement for us is, God's word is just as true today as it's ever been. It works today just like it's always worked. Uh, there's encouragement for us here. Um, we, we sang Psalm 19, verses 7 through 11. The law of the Lord is, what's, what's the word there? Perfect. And just one thing after another, he, he, he labels it. Take a look at that. Well, it's just two pages away. At converting the soul. That's what people need. The testimony of the Lord is sure. Making wise the simple. Listen, the answer is not education. The answer is God's word. The statutes of the Lord are right. Rejoicing the heart. If you want to feel better about life, get into God's word. Get the joy of the Lord. Uh, the commandments of the Lord are pure. Enlightening the eyes. And just on and on he goes. God's word is the answer to what people want. Um, he also does say in verse 11, Moreover, by them is thy servant warned. God's word will keep you out of trouble. <laughs> He'll help you. And there's a time when we need warning. And in keeping of them, there's great reward. There's warning and, and there's reward. And back to, to Psalm 12 there, verse 8. He says, The wicked walk on every side when the vilest men are exalted. And when God is ignored, wicked people rise up the ladder. We're seeing that. Uh, you know, today, there's still a conflict. Uh, when when our leaders do something wrong, our, our, our highly moral media makes sure that we know that they have done wrong. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry, but I, I've just never seen such a self-righteous group of people. But anyway, um, you know, oh, boy, they, hurt, they follow them around and ask them if they're sorry and if they're going to apologize and, <laughs> uh, and so on. Yeah, at this point, there's a lot of conflict about morality. But as we leave God's word out, we can rise. And uh, it, it gets worse and worse and worse. Now, we see the encouragement. God's word is still true. But you know, there's, there's also a danger. Uh, the danger is us being polluted by the world. Uh, let me show you what Peter said about it in 2 Peter chapter 2. And he gives us a, a great example of Lot. Remember Lot? He lived in Sodom and Gomorrah. 2 Peter 2, verse, verse 6, talks about Sodom and Gomorrah, how that God uh, made them an example to those that should live ungodly. Verse 7, and delivered just Lot, vexed with the filthy conversation of the wicked. And that righteous man dwelling among them and seeing and hearing, vexed his righteous soul from day to day with their unlawful deeds. He uses that word vexed twice. It, it means basically to be oppressed or to be bothered or, or weakened. And here's Lot. And when he uses that word just, he doesn't mean only. He means that he was a righteous man. He's a, he was just. But in living and seeing and hearing all that wickedness that was going on around him, it vexed his righteous soul. And we need to be careful as Christians that we're not so focused on the things around us that, that it harms our, our walk with the Lord, harms our own soul. Um, don't feel like you always have to have noise going on. You need some time when it, you're quiet with the Lord. Now, I, I see people with these buds in their ears and you know, just you go to their homes and, and there's always got to be something going. My theory is, I don't, I'm not sure somebody else thought of it, is that sometimes we don't want quiet because it means our conscience will kick in. Uh, and well, as Christians, we want our conscience to kick in. We want, that's God speaking to us. We want that. We want to have a better walk with the Lord. Um, you know, we, uh, we're in the world. There's no getting around that. Take a look sometime at John 17, and he talks about all the, the, the things about the world. You know, we're saved out of the world. We're in the world, but we're not of the world. But we're sent unto the world. <laughs> and we're trying to rescue them. And, you know, sometimes in, uh, in rescuing others, we can, uh, we can get vexed. And, and we need to be careful that our focus is on God's Word. God's Word is still true. Like it worked for David, it'll work for us. Like it worked for Peter and Paul, it'll work for us. And uh, we need to understand that. that went away, but 2 Peter 2, verse 9, here's our hope. The Lord knoweth how to deliver the godly out of temptation and to resist. 
reserve the unjust under the day of judgment to be punished. God's going to sort it out. And he's, that follows just after he talks about Lot being taken out of Sodom and Gomorrah. <laughs> yeah, God knows who's a Lot and he knows who's not. You know, he took Lot out, he judged uh, Sodom and Gomorrah. And if we know the Lord, God will redeem us. God will take care of us. God is our refuge and strength. His word is the rock that we hide in. And uh, you know, that, those verses, uh, Psalm 12, verses 6 and 7, are such an encouragement. God's word, the words of the Lord are pure words. As silver tried in the furnace of earth, purified seven times, thou shalt keep them, O Lord. You know, the world's tried to get rid of the Bible. Many times. Thou shalt preserve them from this generation forever. We have God's word, and it's still true today. What a blessing. So be encouraged. Uh, we have what we need. God has given it to us in himself and in his word. Any comments or questions?